on the second day of creation, we'd better read it. You see, there's no doubt about it, this book of Genesis does not claim to be the really well thought out theories of Moses. It doesn't claim to be that at all. It does never claim to be the hypotheses of the ancient rabbinic scribes. It doesn't claim to be that at all. This actual, from cover to cover, this book, unlike many religious books, claims to be the word of the God who was there. That's why Isaac Newton took a lot of notice of it. That's why Michael Faraday took a lot of notice of it. And they were famous for their scientific discoveries, correct? And the funny thing is they got many of them out of this book. Do you know why Isaac Newton went looking for things like the law of gravity? Because this God is a God of law and order. And if this God made the heavens and this God made the earth, then whatever keeps the moon up must be connected to what makes apples come down because there are laws. And there's laws because there's a God of law. And on the second day, look what it says. Oh, that's the picture. Let's read it. And it says in verse 6, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, a space there, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, divide the waters which were under the firmament of the waters, which, from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Now, most of you missed my little clue there. You see, the space that God made, the firmament as it's called here, he separated the waters above from the waters below, and what did he call it? The heavens. Okay. Did you catch Genesis 1 in the beginning? God made the heavens and the earth. I'll save that till a bit later if you wouldn't mind. So what you'll find is on the second day, you get a hit as to the history of that word. You see, he heaved up the top of the sky. The heavens is the heavens. So we've now got two heavens. There's the first one where he's stretching it out. It's being heaved. And there's the second one where he's heaving it up. Aren't words interesting? They really are interesting. And by the time you get to the end of the second day, if you sit down and try and draw a picture of this, this is probably the closest simple approximation you can come to. Now, you weren't there, and I wasn't there. We've got the word of God who was, and in our present world, this is an oversimplification, but that's probably good enough for start. We don't know what's in the middle. I'm guessing. These are John Mackay's guesses, right? You don't read anything like that in the biblical picture. But we're trying to come to grips with, given that this is true, not just a theory, what would it suggest we begin to look for as we go and dig up rocks for the next week or so? Waters below, a second heaven, waters above, no visible land and no visible life. 